continuing where I left off in my previous video, there is still more on the subject of effectively drawing multiple line strokes at once that I haven't shown you. I am dedicating a separate video to this alternative method, so I can show another example, but this time using no keyframes at all. In a comment on my previous video, someone compared it to the trim modifier for shape layer paths in After Effects, in that you can trim both start and end of splines and then animate the offset to create a pulsing effect. I built this project a long time ago, but it's a perfect occasion to demonstrate this method. Enough words and let's go to it. The principle remains the same. Have a bunch of separate splines grouped together into one and then use mouse blind to draw the line. Instead of the connect and spline mask combination, I'll use a tracer this time. Drag all the splines into the trace link list and choose connect elements as the tracing mode. Leave both trace active and trace vertices checkboxes active. This one step will generate a new spline that goes through all points of the guide strokes we have fed the tracer and connect them into one, each object represented by a segment. Same as earlier, we can modify the splines, reorder them, add new ones to the list or remove them as we see fit. But there is a drawback with this setup you have to drag each spline object into the trace link list manually every time you wish to add a new stroke or reorder them. Now here's a trick I learned on the old C4D Cafe YouTube channel from a guy named Hervoya. I say old channel because now it's gone. Well, not exactly gone. In fact, if you do a search, it will show a C4D Cafe channel on YouTube with the logo and all. But the old videos are gone, and I don't understand why. Anyway, it involves the use of some Python code, but don't worry, there are only a few lines of it and I'll explain each step as good as I can. It will allow you to drag all new splines under the trace object and let Python add them automatically on the trace link list. Let's start by adding a Python tag to the tracer. First, we create a new C4D in exclude data Python object and assign it to a variable called inax. Then, we get the tracer object into Python by using this syntax op, which returns the Python tag itself, followed by the get object method. After that, we apply the get children method which returns a list of all the objects parented to the tracer in the hierarchy. Now run a loop and add each child to the inx object using the insert object method. Right now, the populated inexclude data is only present in Python memory. We need to send this inexclude data object to the tracer. So, we get the tracer object again by typing op for the tag, get object, which returns the tracer, and then go ahead and drag the tracer link text into the expression editor to target it from Python. Assign it the inx object that we filled earlier with the children of the tracer, and as you see, the list is now populated with the same objects. There is no more need to do it manually. The same thing can be achieved using the Python node inside Expresso as well. Let me show that way too. First, I'll disable our Python tag and remove all objects from the trace link list. Append an Expresso tag to the tracer and add an object node to it. By default, object nodes point to the object the Expresso tag is attached. 
add a Python node and delete both input and output ports. Drag the object output port from the tracer to the input of the Python node. Only the link data port is active. You should also delete all the code lines under the main line. Now let's write the code. Create the inexclude data Python object and assign it to the inex variable. Now run a loop for all children of input 1, which is the tracer object, using the getChildren method and then insert each one to the inex list with the insert object method. That's it. As you see, the express away requires less code written, and that's what I prefer. Now you don't have to understand everything I just wrote to be able to use the setup. Just copy it and save the scene as a preset. If you are interested in the details, take your time and have a look at the C4D Python API reference. Let's go on. For the 10th anniversary of Digital, the company I was working at the time, I created this piece of animation. The circuit elements are a series of splines drawn around the logo and the pulse effect is achieved by trimming the end of the mouse spline and driving the offset slider by time using Expresso. Drop a time node and to make the pulse effect repeat, we need to decide on an interval length. For the moment, I'll use a constant and later create a user data for it. I'll enter 25. Divide the frame number by this interval. This returns a floating number, which in fact exceeds the 0 to 1 range of the mouse spline offset value. So to keep repeating the same range of values, we use a math node with the operation set to modulo. Set the modulo to 2. Now each time the value exceeds 1, it goes back to 0. We need to fit this range so it covers the normal range from 0 to 1 plus the value of the end slider. So we drop a range mapper node, connect the result of time to the value input port, and then get the mouse spline and slider value, negate it, and connect it to the minimum out port. Now drive the offset value of mouse spline with this result. You can tweak the interval value to your liking and also get different effects by changing the order of splines in the hierarchy. Of course, you can also change the mouse spline mode to separate segments for a different effect. This mode doesn't care for the order of splines, in fact, but now you have options. And although you can technically control all lines with one slider, there's nothing to stop you from dividing the object you wish to draw into several parts to accommodate your artistic needs. In fact, that is what I have done in this project with the outlines of these musical instruments. I created pairs of tracers and mouse blind generators 
or different parts of the instruments and offset their animation keyframes. That's it for this time. Now you know two ways of grouping splines together to use them as guides for drawing lines along them. Don't forget to share the knowledge if you like the videos. I'm still not done though. Subscribe to my channel and be notified next time I post another tip. Until then, bye.